Hi kids! Do you like reading? Do you want to get through multiple chapters every day -ing? Well, that's guess what this video is gonna be about. That was words. So, I recently, well not recently, a long ass time ago, put out a video where I was like, here's my advice for getting through more books faster. And I'm tired of linking the people that video because one, I've certainly learned more since then, and two, the video looks like crap compared to what my channel is now. Look at all this, look at all this green screen majesty going on. So I figured I'd make another video where I go over what I've learned since then, what was covered in that video, and just present it in a whole lot more fun way. And so maybe you can get through as many books as I have because, oh my God, after I put out my first half of 2020 tier list, I got a lot of comments that were like, how Daniel? How did you read 40 books in seven months? Actually, it was 42 because I forgot to add two. You figure out which ones. And also, I know people who have read way more than that in the first seven months of 2020, but they don't have to put together videos every single day, so I have an excuse. But let's go ahead and get into the first piece of advice I have. One biggest, most important thing here. Do not force yourself to read unless you have to because you might ruin the enjoyment of it. If you're going into this video with the mentality of like, I want to read so many books and just burn through them, be aware that that could have a negative effect on your reading. First and foremost, read for enjoyment. So if taking in these practices I'm about to talk about is going to actually lessen your enjoyment of the books you'll experience, why would you do that? So just in moderation, try and put the right amount on the gas pedal, because that's certainly what I've done. I could get through more books than I currently do, but hey, uh, I wouldn't enjoy them as much. So I actually kind of have a little bit eased off from where I once was. All of that being said, let's get into the first piece of genuine actual, this will increase how much you read advice. And this is going to be the multiple formats piece of advice. I am not just reading physical books or e-readers or audiobooks or paperbacks or hardbacks. I read everything. Everything that's a possible way to consume new pieces of fantasy sci-fi, I will do it. And I purposefully diversify so that I'm stimulating my brain in different ways ways so that it doesn't feel like I'm just doing one task endlessly, which eventually will burn me out. For some reason, I do kind of process reading from an e-reader than a book differently. I don't know why, but I can switch from a book to an e-reader and my brain's like, this is new. I don't know why, because it's kind of not. But also, if someone's telling you like, you can't do audiobooks, that person. You can absolutely do audiobooks and count them in your reading list. I hate people who are anti-audiobook. They have no actual logic or reasoning beyond the fact that they're just like, it's a way I can talk down to people for enjoying sci-fi and fantasy. I mean, I guess if we're talking about like high philosophy books, maybe, but leave people alone. You suck. Anyway, I probably split up my reading between like a third audiobooks, a third physical paperbacks, hardbacks, and a third e-readers. This makes it so I can drastically increase how much I can read before I start feel like I'm being burned out. And it's just because I'm tricking my brain into thinking, oh, we're doing something new now. That's fine. Let's continue down this road because reading stamina is a real thing. And this is going to slide into my second point. You just have to read more to increase your overall stamina for reading. Just like regular cardio, it's something that it's, it's, it's you're gonna have to practice. You're gonna have to do it more and more and you'll find yourself being able to read more in one sitting without getting burned out, but you gotta push through. You need to make it so you're just kind of reading more than you ever have before. I've got to the point where I can read like 200 pages in one sitting and that's not a big deal. I'm fine doing that. It's cool. But that took a lot of patience and practice. And there's some people who have an advantage and just can do that already. I had to get to that point. There's some people I've known since middle school that just can sit and read like a book. I can't because my back starts hurting and I gotta move. And this is actually my second little hack to increase your reading stamina. You paying attention, camera guy? There's no camera guy. I'm alone in life and in this room, but... <laughs> Moving from location to location will really help you be able to read more for longer periods of time. I will read on the couch, then I'll move to my bed, then I'll go up to like a common area in my apartment building, I'll go to the river across the bridge and put up a hammock between two trees and read for longer. I physically just bounce around like a ping pong ball of nerdiness 
because I know that that different location will kind of trick my brain once again and feel like we're being more productive. Because for my specific circumstances with the job I do, reading is being extremely productive because I'm actually consuming the things I need to consume to then do the rest of my job. So I'm actually tricking myself to be in the area I need to be in. If you don't necessarily want to do that because reading isn't the most productive thing for you because your job demands something else or you have other hobbies you care more about, maybe you don't need to go this extreme. Just putting that out there because I don't want this video to come across gatekeeping at all. I really don't want this to be like the P90X CrossFit video reading challenge. It's not. Just do what you want to do and read the amounts you want to read. This is just to help get you there. Here's my next big piece of advice. Turn off your phone for the love of God. God. Not in Richmond because, you know, the world's closed. But when I was still in Ohio, I would go to the library occasionally to read. And the number of people I would see sit down at a table with a book, like a, like a good little book nerd, open it, read five minutes, and then pull out their phone and sit on that for 20 and then go back and read five minutes and then do 20 minutes in their f You're not reading. You're not really reading. You're scrolling. Minimize scrolling. Granted, hey, I'm not judging that person. Maybe that's all they wanted to do. I'm specifically saying through the lens of if you want to read more, I put my phone on mute while I read. I just mute it. I say no, no notifications for me, except for like, you know, I have my family set so that like if they text me, they'll go through, but like no one else will. And that helps me read a lot more because I am guilty of if I like open Reddit, that's an hour of my day gone. That's an hour where I learned maybe some cool little interesting factoids and saw some pictures of, I don't know, cute animals, but I certainly did not get further in the book I was reading. So just cut down on that scroll scroll. Anyone you know who you need to hear from if they message you, every smartphone has this thing now where you can be like, they can come through, everyone else not, boom, done. Do that. I specifically make that clarification because I know telling people to like turn off their phones in today's day and age is not an option for many people. Not like in the oh, like oh, ha ha society criticism way. No, like jobs that people have, they cannot turn off their phone. That just like happened in the 2000s. We all just accepted it. Anyway, moving on. Now, I mentioned reading cardio earlier. Now I'm going to move over into the literal cardio uh, area. I actually believe this to be 100% true. If I start off my day, with running or biking or even just general like active activities in my place, just some kind of workout routine, I can read way more later in the day because my body, I'm, I'm not a body scientist, that's not the term, but I'm too lazy to think of it. But if I had to take a little gander, it's probably because my energy's lower. So if I sit for an hour and a half to just read binge, my body's gonna be like, oh, thank God. Oh yeah, just let him. Just let them read, rest, because I know my body's lazy. Whereas opposed to that, if I have done nothing and just sat all day, then my body, if I'm just sitting again reading, is gonna be like, can we, can we move, please? Can we get up and at them? So, you know, maybe start your day with some activity if you wanna read more later in the day. I highly encourage it, whether it's biking to work, walking around the apartment building, I don't know, something. I like to run two, three miles. That gets me burned out enough where I can sit and read or edit a video and it not bother me, but not so burned out enough that I need to go lay down and nap. If I wanna nap, if I, if I run five miles, I need to go nap. It's a nap nap time for me. Also, not to get like physical preaching annoying guy on you, but I, I do believe that in the times in my life where I'm more in physical shape, where I've been doing a better job of keeping myself in line with not becoming a like bad Daniel who just stays indoors and is allergic to the sun. Those are the times where I'm more dominant over my own brain, my own like voice that tells me to do nothing and not be productive. And if I've been going to the gym, I've strengthened the part of me that actually is able to accomplish the things I want to. Therefore, I'm more likely to be able to read because I've kind of quashed that anything else that wants to tell me to do something I don't want to. No, that's a bad voice. No. So yeah, I'm just more like self-disciplined is what I'm getting at very convolutedly. So, so far we have, hey man, read as much as you'd like. Work on your reading stamina, you know, your literal cardio, turn off your phone, diversify the formats of reading you ingest, and the literal self-discipline of just dominating your own brain, as well as moving to multiple locations. All advice I very much so stand behind. And also, sorry, this is one I forgot, but I wanna throw in here. Have a designated like reading nook that's like your zero point. Have like a, this is where I'm going to start reading today. And once you get tired of being there, you'll move from there to another reading location. I have a specific spot in my apartment that I've made comfy as cozy it can be. And that's the one where I start reading 
reading at. Sometimes I'll read there the whole day because it's so nice. Other days I do bounce out. I've tailor made this spot to be like, okay, I can sit here. I can have a little, little snacky bowl. I have a blanket, it's a weighted blanket, which and it's just the perfect spot. Lighting is like mwah, for reading books. It's not like too bright or too dark. Have one of those for yourself. Don't force yourself to only read there, but just have that spot. Make it like your couch. I don't know, whatever. If you have a lazy boy, perfection. But this last piece of advice is by far no question the most important. Don't read books that you're not enjoying. I do a tremendous amount of research before I pick up the next book on my TBR to make sure it's probably gonna be something I'm going to like, or at least get something out of ingesting that that narrative. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do like, okay, a lot of research to make sure I'm only gonna pick up things that I will like. But if you're not enjoying something, never be afraid to DNF. Never, ever, 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 when it comes to reading for enjoyment, just consuming sci-fi fantasy on that level, don't be afraid to go, nah, I'm not taking anything from this. It's boring. It's like, whatever, eh, I'm not having fun. Close, put down, pick something else up. That's huge because there's so many people in this community who through various arguments will tell you like, DNFing's never a good thing, that's awful. And they'll try to like hold it up. If maybe you had my job, that's debatable. I've DNF'd like a couple books recently, but not a ton because, you know, it's literally my job to get through books I even don't like. But I make sure there's a good chance for any book I pick up, I'm going to enjoy. But for you, the people who are watching this who most likely are not reading for a job, it's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with going, yeah, that's bad. Close it, throw it away. And here's the thing. If you went up to almost anyone in your real life and were like, yeah, I didn't finish that book. I didn't like it. They'd go, that's a very reasonable thing to do. No normal person would fault you for that. It's only in these like hyper critical online forums, like on Twitter or certain subreddits, you'll find people who are like, you didn't finish that. That's a masterpiece and important for you to read. You're not a real fan if you didn't finish that boy right there. First of all, yeah, you are a real fan. If you just have read one fantasy book and you're like, I like that fantasy book, I'm a fan of fantasy. You have every right to call yourself a fantasy fan. Anyone who says otherwise can just shove right off. I don't care if you pick up Lord of the Rings, read one page and decide that's not for me and put it down. I'm still happy to have a conversation with you about fantasy because you're a different human being with an all new perspective. And I'm always interested in learning that. So do not force yourself to finish reading because this is like a conspiracy theory I'm working on. We are all forced to read a bunch of books we don't love for our education. And I think in my mind, that's why like, I would say 40 to 70% of the adults I meet, that's a wide range because I don't ask everybody this and I'm trying to, you know, give myself a little bit of insurance there. Don't read anymore as adults. They just will not pick up a book ever. And they say, I hate reading. Even if like in middle school, they loved reading. They were someone who was like binging through Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, His Dark Materials. But then they get to high school and college, they're forced to read things that are considered the classics. And by the end of doing that, they're like, yeah, I just, I don't want to read anymore. It was awful. I hated everything that happened. I want to go nap for a year. And that's why I just cannot embrace this idea of forcing people to read things they might not enjoy because it's required reading for the genre. Because what you can end up doing is killing someone's desire to read as a whole. And that's like evil. That's evil to do. If I was designing our education system, I would have some like, yeah, these are some books you should get to read two or three of them and then do your reports on them. But besides that, just finish a book every two weeks. You pick it because no matter, I, I just fully believe the most important thing for a developing young mind to do is to encourage and install a love of learning and reading. And what our current education system does is force you to read a bunch of stuff that maybe some people in charge of your like, district. I don't even know how those reading assignments get picked, but they were awful in the schools I went to. And then you have to like just digest these older books that are just not enjoyable for a young mind. Those were written for an older crowd to enjoy back in like the 50s sometimes they were released. And then like they expect like a high school kid frothing at the mouth with hormones to be like, oh yes, this was great. I'm going to continue reading books like this. No! So yeah, don't be afraid to DNF. Read what you love. Read outside of your educational requirements because I think that'll actually kindle that flame of a love of reading and move on from there. Rally against gatekeeping in all of its forms 
And man, reading's dope. Enjoy it. And if you're one of these people who after me saying like, oh, after high school, college, just stopped reading altogether. And you're like, wait a minute, that's me. Here's my biggest piece of advice for you. Go to Barnes and Noble, go to the sci-fi fantasy section, start just reading the backs of books, little, little inside flaps, and just find one that sparks your interest. Just find one that's like that, that's different. I like that. That's kind of neat. I want to read that. What's that in there? Well, it's got, it's got some influence I haven't seen before. Yeah, I'm gonna pick that one up. I'm gonna read that boy. Yeah, I'm gonna read that. And hopefully that'll rekindle that love. Cause I think that's really, 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 really important. Anyway guys, this is just my thoughts on how to become a faster booktube level reader. It's mainly about tricking your brain because we're just caffeinated space apes and we were not designed to, you know, sit and stare at letters on wood for just tons and tons and tons of time. So yeah, just trick your brain, do all these other things. And you know, if it's not your job, don't force yourself to do it. That's okay. No one's here to be mad at you. And if they are, shove them off a bridge. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.